Uh, let me ask, um, how is anonymous a clear and present danger? Um, really what you're dealing, when you deal with a group like anonymous, uh, they're really not so special in, in, in the extent that you have, they are a hate group. They're a religious hate group. Um, they're engaged in terrorist threats and hate against, uh, you know, not only Scientologists, but um, members of other religions, um, people of other beliefs, and, uh, or, or even things not even relating to religion. And uh, they'll attack for whatever reasons that they see fit. It's, uh, it's hard to understand it. Um, they say themselves they do it for, for laughs and for kicks. And, uh, and, but really, it does boil down to hate crimes and, uh, and, and a religious hate group that is you know, really in, intending to um, bring about you know, harm and bigotry and upset as much as possible to uh, you know, individual members of, of a church and a religious organization. And their members have been arrested and charged with hate crimes, um, website attacks, you know, these kinds of things against Scientologists, against others. Uh, Making terrorist threats, you know, a member of Anonymous was, you know, given federal jail time for making terrorist threats to blow up stadiums in the U.S. and these kinds of things. So, to that degree, their investigation, they're under investigation by, you know, Federal Bureau of Investigation, the United States Secret Service, two separate federal investigations as well as multiple local law enforcement investigations. And these are the kind of things you have to take seriously. You deal with it, uh, handle it how you see fit to ensure the protection of, you know, our parishioners and and these kinds of things, and then otherwise we just carry on. Scientologists carry on practicing their religion, and the church is doing their work in the community and these kinds of things. You're meeting with the Secret Service uh, very soon, correct? Uh, well, we're regularly in touch with uh, the um, Federal Cyber Crimes Task Force, which includes the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the United States Secret Service, and the U.S. Attorney's Office. And um, from the standpoint of it being hate crimes, cyber crimes, uh, different violent crimes, terrorist threats, these kinds of things, whether it's done using the Internet or, <clears throat> or in person, you know, you you, uh, you just deal with it as you see fit. And really, it's a matter for law enforcement. And, um, you know, the FBI's already, uh, or the Department of Justice already indicted one member of Anonymous for website attacks. And there were two members of Anonymous who have been arrested in New York City for and charged with hate crimes by the New York Police Department's uh, hate crimes unit. So we just provide the information to law enforcement, and they take the action that they deem necessary, you know, based on what's occurred. Bruce County Board of Supervisors looking into potentially passing uh, an ordinance that would... Uh prohibit picketing in residential zones. What are the particular parts of the ordinance that the Church of Scientology would support, and why is this emergency ordinance needed? Well, when you're talking about um, targeted residential picketing, uh, that, that's its own issue, and, and different counties and cities uh, deal with it as they see fit. Um, you know, the Church is a huge advocate of free speech. Um, and uh, we feel very strongly about uh, the sanctity and the importance of the U.S. Constitution and, uh, and, the, and the right of any individual um, to, to speak freely. It's a fundamental right. It's a constitutionally guaranteed right, and it's something that's really important. Um, what you run into sometimes is, uh, is where you move, you move past something that would really could honestly be characterized as free speech, and you move into really actual harassment of individuals. Uh, in the case of the Church of Scientology, it's been situations where you have um, people that under the guise of picketing, under the guise and the pretense of freedom of speech, are really just engaged in, in actual harassment of individuals. And the kind of people we're talking about are people who, um, you know, uh, have assaulted our staff. Um, you know, one of them is, uh, is uh, you know, is, has, appear, is, has appeared and has more appearances to have before a court of law for his assaults on the staff on one of our staff. You have uh, an individual who has restraining orders against him for uh, stalking uh, our, uh, our parishioners and our staff and these kinds of things. So when you're dealing with that kind of a situation where, uh, you know, you, under the guise of free speech uh, or, or it, where it's really a pretense, they're, they're actually engaged in individual harassment of people because of their religious beliefs and, and uh, very obvious attempts to interrupt them in going about either practicing their religion or if they're um, a volunteer for the church or, or, or someone who is a staff member of the church trying to go about their daily life and harassing them where they live, that's a whole, that's a whole different uh, kettle of fish. Um, specifically with regards to the Riverside Ordinance uh, and, uh, and, and what the um, County you know, Board of Supervisors is, is currently reviewing, our primary concern is, is, is that where we're located is a very high-speed 
uh, road that's passing past our property. There's no sidewalk. There's no place for pedestrians. And, and we have a lot of concern of uh, actual just public safety, safety for the people who are driving, and, and really safety for anyone who's out on the street. And we'd be really concerned about somebody getting hit, uh, somebody getting hurt, and, uh, and it's dangerous, and there's got to be a better way to go about that. And when you can't appeal to somebody's sense of, uh, of, of safety uh, for themselves and others, um, that's when it becomes a matter of law enforcement, and that's where the Board of Supervisors, uh, you know, will make their decision on how they see fit. And you have the County Sheriff's Department and, and different people who rightly deal with these kinds of things. And, uh, and, and you know, as a, a long-term member of the community there, we just want to bring it to, to their attention so that they can take the appropriate action to see that nobody ever gets hurt and nobody's ever in harm's way um, would really be one of the bigger concerns, uh, not to mention dealing with you know, any of the harassment that actually is against the law and that would be illegal and that um, is f way, way, way outside of, of the bounds of, of uh, you know, anyone's uh, free speech, and, and, but also ensuring that those, those rights aren't infringed upon. Now, Supervisor Stone read this booklet. He gave it to me, uh, Anonymous, who they are, what they do. Uh, mm -hmm. th this, this is, uh, I believe you were mentioning, this is from the Church of Scientology. This was, was this produced by the Church of Scientology? Um, this is a publication that was put together by a group of, uh, uh, of, of individuals and that uh, work with the church and also work with other groups, uh, human rights organizations and other religions, um, really on the phenomenon of, of hate on the Internet under the in the name of or under the guise of anonymous and really details the hate crimes, um, the, the bigotry, the attacks and, uh, and these kinds of things that anonymous engages in regularly. Uh, I mean, I don't even know, I mean, breaking news today um, about uh, anonymous hacking into uh, Digital Camera Magazine's website and, uh, you know, taking down the website and changing passwords and these kinds of things and, and uh, you know, it was a um, a member of Anonymous that was involved in uh, hacking into vice presidential uh, nominates, nominees' uh, uh, email accounts, Sarah Palin, and, uh, you know, these kinds of things. So you're dealing with enormous amounts of, of pornography, child porn, um, uh, gore, um, exploitism, you know, really, really, really disgusting things that, that, uh, that are traded and passed on to each other, talked about, um, people's email accounts being hacked into and spammed with these kinds of things. This isn't just something having to do with the Church of Scientology. It's dealing with a legitimate hate group that's engaged in actions intended to harm other people and harass them, and uh, all under the name of, of Anonymous. Yes. Supervisor Stone read this booklet, and actually he you know, highlighted certain specific parts in it, mm -hmm. and, and he gave us the, this exact copy. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what looks like it's missing in here, though, and I'm just curious, it has no byline. It has no, you know, like written by or prepared by. There's nothing in there about it. So I'm just kind of curious about, and, uh, you know, we've also been trying to ask uh, Supervisor Stone, in effect, you know, why is he presenting something that, has no byline. It's, it's in a sense, pardon the pun, anonymous, at least who is writing this, this booklet here. It's being presented as, in fact, convincing the supervisors to pass this ordinance. So why is, it an, why is this booklet, in a sense, anonymous? There, uh, the no booklet's way. not anonymous. The, uh, you know, members of the Church of Scientology were absolutely involved in compiling that information and documenting it because we were the victims of it. True. So we provided the evidence. It's, uh, it's, and it's also anyth everything and anything in there is widely and easily locatable on the Internet. But it has no byline. It has no you know, thing you know, written by or funded by. That, that's just kind of what puzzled uh, us about this booklet because it, it became Exhibit 1, in a sense, with the supervisors, the main exhibit that mm -hmm. convinced that Jeff Stone used to convince uh, the other supervisors that this is a hate group. You know, w listen to this, and, and there was a, a very powerful presentation, but, you know, we just didn't know who it was by because sure. there's no byline. That's why we were kind of puzzled by it. Okay. I, I mean, I, I just told you that the church was absolutely involved in putting that together, and it was a compilation, comp, compilation of information that's easily locatable on the Internet. Um, if you want to know... Really, if you want to know who that booklet's by, it's by the people who produce the hate, and those people are members of Anonymous, and they are the purveyors and the creators of the content that makes up that booklet. To the degree that Supervisor Stone chose to use that in, in communicating about the, uh, you know, the ordinance, obviously that's his choice. Um, and uh, you know, and, and uh, because the county had questions about the pickets, at Golden Era Productions as an example of targeted residential picketing um, in the county, 
uh, we provided him, him with information of 